surprising we get nine sacks and that not be good enough to win a game? Because you guys, last year you talked about all the sacks we didn't have, and you guys somehow think that sacks lead to victories. They're great. We'll talk about how many we had this year, but I like turnovers and interceptions and cause fumbles. So maybe we'll talk. Maybe we had too many sacks this year. <laughs> oh, a little, a little salty, he's, Mike Gray. Well, salty. Look, hey, <laughs> the, the only stat that matters is points scored versus points allowed, determined on a per game basis. And for the Titans on Saturday, they didn't score enough points. The Bengals did, and the Bengals advanced. So. The worst of divisional weekend. Let's start where we began with the best of the weekend. The most disappointing team out of the four that lost, Chris. I, I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, I know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers weren't at full strength. I, I, I get that. You know, you're missing Godwin. You're missing Antonio Brown. I know Tristan Wirfs was out. Yes. But damn, still, there's there's still a ton of talent on that football team. I mean, Mike Evans is not chop liver. Gronkowski's not chop liver. The rest of those linemen are good. That running back's good. Their defense was healthy for the most part. I think everybody was out there except for one guy. That, that to me, was the most disappointing thing. Again, I think you, you look at that. They were just outplayed. They were out hit. They were out coached. That game was so misleading. It was 30 to 27, but I mean, it was this close and should have been 40 to 10, 40 to 13, somewhere in there. To me, that was the team that I thought came out and laid the egg. I know they were fortunate to get back in it and certainly got Brady and respect all of that, but I would have expected a better performance, just a better look overall uh, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to say it's the Green Bay Packers, and it's not just because of this year. It's this continuation, squandering the number one seed for yeah. two years in a row, not even getting to the NFC Championship as the one seed this year. The stat that I love, the stat that's amazed me, it's left me even a little numb, 14-0 and were the Packers at home in the postseason through 2001. As of 2002, 7-7, seven and seven, starting with the loss to Mike Vick and the Falcons in the wild card round. They have gone from being invincible to, to mediocre at home in the postseason and 20 years of that is the end of Brett Favre and all of Aaron Rodgers from the loss to the Giants 10 years ago uh, in the divisional round last I mean they've been one seed at least three times and they haven't used the one seed to get to the playoffs worst quarterback performance from the divisional round that's easy uh, it's Ryan Tannehill I mean that, that's you know that's probably why Vrabel's sitting there salty. He's going, man, if my quarterback doesn't come out and think he's you know Brett Favre trying to laser balls into tight windows, we're 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 gonna win the football game or we can win the game, you know, twenty to sixteen, uh, seventeen, fourteen. But just to come out the gate just like this, Ryan Tannehill, not first off to not have a feel for what the game was and what it is, and to know, hey, we're a defensive team that doesn't blow people out. You can get this interception there okay I mean I'm not mad at Ryan Tannehill there that's a great play by Mike Hilton he's really good but the first interception and then this interception here on a third and five with a little over 20 seconds left around midfield the only way you certainly lose the game right there is to do exactly what you did right there so Tannehill a guy I've defended a lot and I know people jump on him but how can you not you know how can you not jump on him that he was certainly uh, to me the reason the Titans lost is it him or is it the play caller, though? Because those plays shouldn't have been called. None of the three that became interceptions should have been called. I don't like the let's get cute with play action pass right out of the gates unless you're going for the home run shot. Why are you doing play action to Derrick Henry? Hey, Derrick Henry's back. He's missed nine games. Oop, fake. Oop, psych. We're not going to run it with Derrick Henry. We're just going to throw it 15 yards down the field instead. I didn't like that. I didn't like that short pass after they had the long run that set them up. And, uh, and at the end of the game, what are you doing calling that pass? Just... Just take it to overtime. What what good is going to come out of throwing the ball into traffic like that? Nothing. Obviously, they gave the ball back to the Bengals, and the Bengals had enough time to get in position to win the game. You know, I'm looking at, and I tried to pull up the stats for all of the quarterbacks because I did say of the four teams that lost, but Jimmy Garoppolo – at 131 passing yards, one interception, a rating of 57.1. Um, I'm yeah, going to say mean, Garoppolo. Yeah. I, look, because yeah. the fact that they won makes it more glaring. It's amazing. How did they win right. with Jimmy Garoppolo as their quarterback? Right. And, you know, one thing we didn't really talk about all the way back in segment one, Aaron Rodgers 
Tom Brady. If the 49ers don't win the Super Bowl, how do you not at least consider the possibility of a bridge year with one of those two guys while you continue to get Trey Lance ready, whether it's Brady or whether it's Rodgers? And we know they tried to get Rodgers the night before the draft. They tried. So I, I, I just, it's, this is amazing to me. This is a storyline that I think should be more significant in a quarterback driven league. You've got a Final Four team whose quarterback is their biggest offensive liability. Right. I, that's, it's, it's amazing. It just tells you the quality of the football team and what they got there. They are they're a Super Bowl team with a quarterback that's really around the top 20 in football. Not top not even 10. top 20. Really not. not top You're 20. right. You're right. Between 20 and you 25. Know? And again, you know, this is where, again, context matters. I mean, things will go down and five years ago, people, five years from now, people will make fun of Aaron Rodgers and they go, he lost to Jimmy Garoppolo twice in the playoffs. I'm going to go, the, the 49ers literally in both playoff games tried to hide him and get him off the field and put him by the hot dog stand if they could have. And and they still won the game. So it's like we always boil it down to quarterback, quarterback. But, I mean, you're right. And the interception he played in the game, I mean, threw in the game, holy crap. I mean, was there – that might have took the cake as the dumbest interception of the weekend right there. I mean, it was. You finally drive down the field. You're close to the end zone. You scramble and throw a ball off your back leg 25 yards down the field. That was uh, not a good one. It's, it's continuing what you've always said. It's scary, and they try to manage the game around them. When you least expect it, expect it. When you most expect it, expect it. Either way, expect it when it comes to Jimmy G. And think about this. Take those two playoff games. Flip Aaron Rodgers and Jimmy G. The final score is 53-10. to 10 and That's where I wish games. people would realize some of that stuff sometimes. It's just, it's just not always about the quarterback. And I appreciate you saying that. That's a good job by you. And let's continue it right up until the top of the hour. And let's do the worst coaching decision because you know what there are several questionable decisions made by coaches in the weekend that has led to those coaches now being numb maybe if they had been more prepared they would not be currently numb give me the one coach decision that stands out for you well you lead it off go uh, ahead it's a no-brainer what are you doing with the all-out blitz that's what got greg williams fired by the jets what are you doing bruce arians allowing an all-out blitz of matthew stafford i know that they were presumably trying to rattle him thinking maybe he'd make a mistake, fumble the ball, throw it the wrong way, pick six, whatever. But that that all-out blitz between the decision, the execution, the communication, that's it. That's a disaster. Tom Brady's got to be livid about that the more he thinks about it. He led that team back from 27-3, and his head coach and defensive coordinator handed the game to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Listen, I don't get it either. I think it's probably would take the cake for me too. If you made me pick one, I would probably go with that one. I don't get it. Again, first off, it's Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay. You're not going to catch them off guard or not have a plan for the all-out blitz. They're pretty smart guys. You know, I know Bruce Arians talked about one guy didn't blitz. It didn't matter. There was free guys coming. Stafford knew it. He was floating back. He threw it off his back foot. I don't get that. And then you leave Antoine Winfield, a safety one-on-one with the best receiver in football this year. Uh, I'm with you there. I think the only other one I can look at to that maybe rivals it is just maybe not the sky kick or the squib kick, you know, by Sean McDermott and the Bills in that game. That's the only one. And I don't, I'm not a fan Un- of the squib. Unless squid. Tyreek Hill return it for a touchdown. Well, that's the thing you have to worry about, too. And that's why yeah. we don't have enough time to discuss this because we're ending the show. But maybe we'll hit it tomorrow. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.